Last week, I ended up buying a tool that I am very excited about and that I've always wanted to add to my collection. Well, actually, I also bought an angle grinder, but that was much less exciting and I only bought it to get the job done. But I was very excited to buy an impact wrench even though I was pretty much forced into buying one. If you did see me replace my chain and sprockets on the dirt bike on my main channel, you'll know what I'm talking about. But today I wanted to talk a bit about impacts, because if you watch as many motorcycle rebuilds as I do on YouTube, you might have noticed that just about everybody has one and you might be under the impression that you then need one to get most jobs done. So I wanted to go over what an impact is, what they're best at, and do you really need one? So what makes an impact driver or wrench special compared to a regular drill or screwdriver is that it has an anvil and a hammer inside. And that is what makes the famous noise that's associated with impact. So I am not going to explain this very nicely, but basically the hammer and the anvil have notches on them and those can interlock. So when there's no resistance, they can just interlock and spin freely. But as soon as there is a bit of resistance applied, the hammer, which is on a spring, can slip off the back of the anvil, those notches can disconnect, and they will find new notches to interlink. And as those lock together because it's spinning, they hit together, and that is what creates the impact. So those little impacts or hammers are exactly what loosens your bolt. Because it can do it so many times per second or minute, this one's rated to about 3,000 impacts per minute. Depending on what you buy, it can be more or less than that but that is more impacts per minute than probably what your bike idles at. So it's a lot, and that is what can loosen a bolt so effectively. So the difference between an impact and a hammer drill is simply the direction of which the impacts are applied. On a wrench, it's trying to loosen a bolt, so the impacts are happening in this direction. Where a drill that's trying to drill into a wall, the impacts are happening in this direction. So impacts can also apply massive numbers of torque. This one is rated to about 300 Newton meters, which is quite a lot. That would take quite a long lever for me to be able to apply that much force to a bolt. And of course you get much bigger impact wrenches and you even get smaller ones. Like I said, I have always wanted to have my own impact. But last week something happened that made me pull the trigger, pun intended. So I was trying to loosen the nut on my bike's front sprocket, which is a challenge because that sprocket spins. People also generally over tighten those nuts because they're paranoid, which really isn't necessary because you can bend over the little washer tabs to hold it in place. So you shouldn't go to those extremes. So I had tried just about everything. I started with getting my girlfriend to stand on the rear brake so I could use the back wheel to stop the sprocket from spinning, but that didn't work. I graduated to wrapping the chain around the axle, jamming it with a screwdriver, but still I couldn't apply enough force to break that bolt free, which was really frustrating me, so that is why I went to buy one of these. So an impact is brilliant because it can apply a lot of torque and also all those little impacts come in very handy, especially on a nut like that that's spinning. The other reason that I pulled the trigger on an impact is because I'm going to need it very soon again for another job. So soon I'm going to have to remove my clutch basket in order to be able to remove my current shift shaft and put my new one back in. And to remove your clutch basket there is another nut on there that also spins. So you have three options to be able to remove that. The first one is the smartest option and it's just to buy a clutch holding tool that holds it in place nicely while you loosen off the nut. The worst option in my opinion is you can jam something like a copper penny in there because copper is softer than steel so in theory it shouldn't damage the gears but I worry that a piece of that penny lands up in the engine. And your third option and the most popular on forums at least is to just use an impact because like I said, those impacts make removing spinning nuts like that very easy. Well, at least I hope it's going to be. So this isn't an expensive one. This is just a local brand to me, which means it's probably just another Chinese variant with their brand name slapped on the side of it. But to be honest, it's been absolutely brilliant for me. It seems to be built very solidly, it has some nice features, and it accomplished the job that I wanted very nicely. So it comes in three parts. You have to buy the impact wrench itself that comes with a nice case. You then have to buy a battery for it that's sold separately. 
and then you still have to buy the charger to be able to charge that battery you just paid extra for. It's an annoying process, but you end up with something quite nice. So this one has a friction ring to be able to attach sockets to it. You can also get ones with the little ball on the end of them, I don't know what it's called, but this works nice because it's just very fast to take sockets on and off. It also has a little LED up front to light up what you're doing. It works quite well and I did actually use it once. The battery also has LEDs indicating the charge level and then it has three settings. It has a low torque setting, a high torque setting and then a smart loosen function which basically means that you can hold the trigger down while loosening a bolt and as soon as that bolt is loose it will stop moving even if you're still holding the trigger down. A pretty clever function when you're trying to loosen lots of bolts quickly. Probably not ideal if you're going to use this every single day of your life for your job but perfect for your general garage and home use. So the biggest difference between an impact driver and an impact wrench is mostly just how you attach bits to it on the end here. So a wrench will come with a socket adapter like this. So this is just a half inch socket adapter which means you can fit half inch sockets on it. Very simple. And if you bought an impact driver you would get a quarter inch hex bit on the end here so that you can put screwdriver bits like this in the end of it. So in hindsight I should probably have bought a driver instead of a wrench but at the time my issue was entirely a socket based problem so that just made more sense. But of course you can buy adapters so you can turn your impact driver into a wrench so you could put sockets on it and I have ordered the adapter to turn my wrench into a driver so that then I can put these little screwdriver bits, these quarter inch hex bits onto the end of this and it can just be more useful and put to use more often. The only reason I can do that is because in this brand the wrench and the driver have the exact same specs so it doesn't really matter. But if you do have the biggest wrench on offer you're probably not going to want to use it to hang out pictures in your hallway. It's going to be overkill for that and probably damage some stuff. So these have pretty much unlimited uses. Like I said, they're brilliant for spinning nuts like clutch baskets or sprockets. They're gonna come in handy if you wanna tear a motorcycle down very quickly because they spin so quickly and loosen bolts off very fast. If you have Loctite bolts, they're gonna be nice because they can break Loctite very quickly. And that is just your motorcycle uses. If you do get the right adapters so you are able to use it for both sockets and screwdriver bits, they're gonna be useful for just about everything around the house. I spent hours using hand screwdrivers to screw the screws in on this workbench and it took me hours and my hands were eventually very sore. Whereas this would drive them in insanely quickly and I can't wait to be able to use it. So of course they're not without their drawbacks. They do say that you should practice with them a bit before you go right ahead and tighten up any bolt because they are so powerful you can strip threads and damage bolts very easily. So the way I did it was I would slowly thread a bolt with this nice and gently I would let it hammer about three or four times and then I would get out a hand wrench and see how tight it got them. And most of the time it was looser than I expected, which is a good thing because it means I didn't damage that bolt. Then you should also have impact specific sockets, which basically just have thicker walls so that when all these forces are applied, you can't crack the walls. I didn't buy any of those yet. I'm just using my regular sockets and luckily I didn't have an issue. I even used the biggest socket I have on it and so far I haven't cracked the walls on them. Of course I might have damaged it and later on I'll break it but then it'll be time to invest in impact sockets. For now I'm going to be a rule breaker and use chrome sockets. So it definitely does have a learning curve and it is not for every bolt you can find on a motorcycle but for the ones you're going to play with frequently I'd say it's perfect. If you're going to be using it every single day for work, well then you probably already have one. But I would suggest spending a bit more money to get something like a DeWalt or a Makita, a brand name that everyone knows can be trusted. But for general garage use, the occasional bike work and around the house, 
spending a bit less money and getting a cheaper brand makes a lot more sense. I don't think I'm going to wear it out anytime soon. I don't need every last possible Newton meter and it has all the features I really like and a bit of trigger latency isn't going to annoy me. Ultimately, I can't decide if it's right for you or not, but the fact that we can have a tool in the garage that used to require a pretty impressive compressor setup is pretty cool to me, and I'm gonna take advantage of that. But anyway, thank you so much for watching Reduced Chaos. Let me know what you think of impacts or what cool tools we should get next, and I'll see you on the next ride.